changed, the meta has changed, how much of their game have they changed for each other? You're going to see a lot of passing here in Dallas. Bunch to the left, Tyreek Hill to the right, Locky going to work. Gets it away, little C route to the outside, and Ingram will haul it in at the 45. Good throw there by Derek Carr. Well, I'll tell you one thing that hasn't changed for these guys, Scott, it's their playbooks. And the playbooks that they're using here are the same they used in the regular season. You got Young Kiv in that New England Patriots defense, West Coast oh, offense, and he's throws throws interception! He told us this morning at breakfast, watch out for Megatron. We said, oh, on offense? And he said, on defense. defense. And he's already making plays. Oh, and there it is. And the reason he says he want Megatron in this situation is you can put him in a hard flat assignment from that spot. And he's able to take away both the flat route and the corner route with a six foot five frame. And boy, did the lab work pay off. The Kiva, big turnover early, and we were talking about, Scott, how efficient Block he was at protecting the ball. That's huge. Let's go. noise canceling headsets. I, I'm pretty sure they can hear us after that one. And Vickens will hand it off to Derrick Henry. I believe that's the most feared version, and he'll rumble for nine. So he went with McKinnon for a majority of the season, but now with a little extra cap, he's got Henry in the backfield for that truck stick. Yeah, he went with the most feared Henry. You see in salary, they'll adjust the player salaries. And that playoff Derrick Henry we saw in the regular season had his salary adjusted, so he cost more cap than he did in the regular season. Kid just went and found the most feared version, nice and cheap with 90 truck, and that's the guy he's going with. 79 cap for that 97. Michael Vick, and the experience has already started. First and 10. Vick, wrapped up at the 48-yard line. Well, he was a big draft pick back in the day. Virginia Tech, but this time goes down. Real quick, Scott, we got two wrapped up during the interception. The playbooks, I didn't get the finish. Kim, West Coast offense, New England defense, Rocky, West Coast offense, Kansas City defense. Just had to get that out the way. Henry doing a nice shot, picking up the blitz. Vic rolling. Throws it with the lefty. He told us and he felt like Vic can make every throw, but there, an overthrow. It'll bring up third down. And one thing I want to call out here, Scott, is when we talked to Kiv earlier, he was saying he was expecting to see Blocky in some different defensive looks. I see someone in the chat, Marshmallow Maddie. He's asking, why are their teams outdated so much? They're not. This is salary cap mode. They get a pick from whatever's out right now leading up to this week. It's just you can't overload your team. you got to fit them inside that 950 cap. Yeah, absolutely. And that's half the battle. We talked to Kev. We said, hey, what do you spend your most time doing? Is it practicing or building your roster? He said it's about 60-40. I mean, he, he's building rosters about 40% of the time, so salary cap, you need to have your GM skills in check. First fourth down of the game, Vic. Blocky sends Goons! And there's the blitz, and he's gonna have great field position. So the turnover doesn't hurt him, and now he's got the ball at the 34. Look at it again, RG. Yeah, and the thing I think that's killing Kiv is Kiv was expecting Blocky not to be in this nickel 335 defense. He said that he had intel that Blocky had switched it up. Blocky had known about that, and he's back in that nickel 335 defense, which is something different than Kiv had prepared for. So that mental chess match going on and all that preparation paying off right there and benefiting Blocky. Try to hand it outside to Patterson. How much there? And it's funny, we talk about how you need to separate yourself for, at this time of year, the people you're playing. Blocky said he matched up with one of Kim's friends in an online matchup. And in that matchup, he was labbing out a different defense that worked pretty well. And he assumed that Kim's friend would go and run him, say, hey, Blocky's running this, Blocky's running that. But that was just a practice game for Blocky. And that intel might have messed Kim up a little bit. That was a very interesting story that they told me. It's funny to see a play out here. Big down, Scott. Adrian Peterson standing beside Dan Carr in the gun here on third and 14. There's a Good nice shot picking up the blitz, but you can't stop the man from Clemson. That's Vic Beasley Jr. who's going to have a big contract coming up this year. That's a huge sack by Vic Beasley. Gets blocky well out of field goal range, fourth and 20. 
Blocky's going to have to consider him putting this rock and getting the boot out. It's the unicorn of Madden. Take a screenshot. Upload it to your memoirs. We got a punt here. He's going to try to pin him deep. Can't get it to the sideline. Kim had some room for a moment. He'll start his drive at the 19. Brendan Cooks couldn't get loose. Now, Block is still in this nickel 3 3 5 defense, Scott. But he says, he, though he's in the same formation he was during the ultimate season, he's changed the way that he runs this defense. In the flat, a lot of room. Which is Barrel his way to the 39. And, and changing the way you run your defense, Scott, is key this time of the year. Because you know during the ultimate league, se ultimate league season, it was all on tape. These guys had plenty of, plenty of time to study. And you got to be able to catch them off guard or something. Goes back to the big fullback from the 49ers. Had some space there. And now he's got the ball dead set at the 50-yard line. Back-to-back -back first downs to his fullback. And he's got lined up there at tight end. He was telling us how good he fe felt about that fullback as well. Vickens! Nasty! Finds Cooks all the way down to the 17-yard line. We caught up with Kev, and he talked about the preparation for this big game. For Bucky, I've been playing a lot of bunch, and I've been playing a lot of uh, nickel defenses, or 3 5 3 3 5 odd. So I feel really prepared right now for really anything. If like he comes out with some exotic defense, um, I feel prepared for that. And that 3 3 5 odd, Scott, that was the one that Kim felt that he would see Blocky in most likely. But Blocky in this the normal nickel 3 3 5 defense. Second and two now as he worked it down to the nine. Nice little drive for young Kiv. After he had a turnover on downs. Had started the game with an interception with Calvin Johnson. Was unable to get points off turnovers, but looking pretty good on this drive is, is a punt that drove him back to the 19-yard line. Let's go! Blue 58! Inside run right here, right up the middle. Come on! Oh, look at him fight! And he stays a fighter. He's fighting his way into the end zone. Kyle Juszczyk. I hope I said his name somewhat right, but Kim was telling us at breakfast today. He's like, that guy fights. I'm gonna you go get KJ. him the ball. Well, let's go KJ. <laughs> but he said, I don't, don't want to embarrass myself. I love when you see these guys call it, though, Scott. He tells you, KJ fights. He gets extra yards. All my games with him. He's been putting in work. And then here on the big stage with the Chalupas on the line, goes in and punches it in for the first touchdown of the game. 7 nothing now in favor of Young Kiv here in this Elite Conference Final. Coming to you live, yes, live from Dallas, Texas. We're a stone's throw from the NFL Draft. And now Blocky's got some work to do. Throws it to the outside. Hill drags the heel at the 40-yard line. That's a good way to answer. That's it. Here we go. Blocky is going to need to get some momentum here on offense. He's been fighting through adversity all season, has continued to overcome it. And now he finds himself in the biggest game of his life, down seven to the feisty young Kim. Maybe the final play of the quarter. Carr rolling, looking, and throws it away with four seconds left in this first frame. Just going to be 15 minutes separating these guys from having an appearance on ESPN2 in the final. That's a really cool opportunity. 7.34. So second and 10 at the 40-yard line. And Ingram held it. somehow held on, and that will put it in plus territory. As we move to the second quarter, your score, Young Kib 7, Blocky 0, with Blocky on the move. And that's just not any normal Evan Ingram, Coltrane. That's the 96 overall. And it's oh, caught by Pershing, it's quick! Again, Megatron it's Activate! Calvin Johnson, baby, let's go. Oh, man. There's a heck of a wide receiver at Georgia Tech and up for the Detroit Lions, but he's balling out out of position right now for Kim. And it's crazy how he called this shot with this one, Scott. He said, I got Calvin Johnson 
put him in that hard flat. He's going to take away both the shallow and the deep stuff with his height. And there he is with his second interception of the game. That one was off the tip a little bit, so. That one's off the tip, so I don't know if it counts as much, but nonetheless, same result. Big play for the killer. Second and 17. Vic finds Brendan Cooks to the 45. So many of our Madden pros. Of course, we got four here today, but they're there watching a Twitch chat. Saw Stiff. He was our Madden 16 champion. Steph Master Meister. Gamer was out there. Even 49er rocking out in Twitch chat with us here. First and 10. Remember, we got some drops going today. Let's head over there and get activated if you want to load up your mutt team. We love the support we get from the community. When you guys tune in and help support the event, help support competitive Madden, that's what it's all about. None of us would be here. None of us would have these opportunities if it wasn't for you guys out there supporting. There's that 94 speed for Michael Vick. Well, he's got, he's so fast. Remember, he's also speed. got that throw power, 95 throw power. So those guys can run deep and still be very open when he can send plays. And you want to talk about speed. Look at Kiv's receiving core. He's got Brandon Cooks, 96 speed. Julio Jones, 96 speed. And the John Brown NFL replay version that also has 96 speed. So it's three, re three receivers in this 11 personnel, all with 96 speed, Scott. There's Henry, a little 22 on 22 action as Paul Krause came down into the box and made the stop. Wait, the, the running back's the slowest skill position on his. <laughs> well, he used to rock that McKinnon, but you know, the truck stick and all the controversy surrounding that, it's just too strong of a tool not to use it. This is big right now. This territory that Kiv's in, this is where he can start to determine if he can make this a two-possession ball game or not. He needs to protect the ball, but get himself some extra yards at the same time. These are a big few plays here. Three minutes ago in the half, has a seven-point lead. Vic trying to get out of there, extend the play. Got to be careful not to fumble. And maybe he got half a yard. It's going to be third and four at the 37. Gosh, I wish we had the telestrator. So much stuff happened on that play, Scott. The big stick, the playmaker. Blocky taking away multiple routes. A lot of high-level battle going on right there. This kicker's either Dane Bailey or Heath, depending on who he wants to pull out. And now he's finally found himself in field goal range. He's got to get a little closer than some of our other competitors. Just doesn't go all in on, like, a Greg the leg. And that's the beauty and salary cap. You, you could choose to spend on a great kicker or you can tank it. You're in control of your roster. Blocky use the timeout there. Two remaining. Bunch to the left. As Michael Vick is absolutely scary. Seamus Wool, good hit. That's why you go get yourself a Paul Krause, the legend. Came up several times and been able to meet Derrick Henry well, head on. Well, after that hit, you saw him go to his coach adjustment, change his ball carrier center to conservative because he knows he can't cough that ball up right here in this big situation. Oh, we got to be careful with Pickens. A lot of confidence at number seven right now. Going to pick up a first down at the 17. A little parched. Asking our lovely crew here for a little H2O to carry him the rest of the way because he's going to take this to the two-minute warning. Play down. This is intense stuff here, Scott. Like we said, 30,000 on the line. A chance to make the ultimate the Madden Bowl championship. Play for another 30,000. Get on ESPN2. Everyone who's been watching you all year. Your hometown, your family, your friends. You're trying to prove it to yourself. And here you are, two games away from being able to consider and claim to tell everybody that you are the best player in Madden 18. Started out with the Ocho, trying to head to the deuce tonight. Second and 10 from the 17. Hands it to Henry. And the delay goes absolutely nowhere. You got to remember in this West Coast playbook, when you're in this gun bunch formation that is so popular, the only run play that they really have, oh, is the draw. You got it. You got it. I see a sweep there. 
Well, you know, we talked about it. I mean, that's the that's the running play you feel is the most effective. There are a few more in that playbook, but you don't see a lot at this level, even though, you know, several people would have disagreed with this uh, in the chat. You know, a lot of people like to use the counter, move outside, but it's really that draw, that that delay that can sometimes get you some nice yardage, but a nice dippity dot down to the two. I was lacking on my playbook knowledge. I could have sworn West Coast only had draw in the in the bunch formation, but then I look at the player. You got sweep, you got counter. That's why I'm up here. Yeah, I, I've I noticed, noticed, I noticed a lot of anymore. times in the chat, people say I, I, the counter works for them. So, but we mostly see the draw at this level for us. We're about to say KJ right up the middle. Let's see if he fights for the Kiva. He's a bowling ball. Aka! 49er fans are going to be proud, even though it's a Seahawk and Kiv punching it in once again. Oh, man. These guys are great at scouting players. Kiv tells us KJ's going to be a beast, and did you just see him run over that nose tackle? I guess I'm going to try to make an attempt. That's Kyle Zuzek. Zuzek? KJ. KJ. All right. Out of bounds. Big. I know 49ers in chat. He'll he'll iron us out. We're, we don't want to besmirch. Look at this. Powerful Watch this nose fullback. tackle. Oh, my gosh. I don't know who that is. It, it, they're probably good. It's probably good that we don't know. We got absolutely ran over. I kind of shook him off this morning at breakfast when he was talking about how big of a beast this kid was. I was like, all right, guy. Sure. Because he, he was using Bo Jackson, and he's like, no, this is my replacement for using that Bo Jackson. I'm like, oh, okay, guy. Yeah, we'll see good that good luck with that, Kevs. Well, he's punched it in for 14. You check is what some people are saying in chat. Who's check? Even chat. Huge check is what we're going to go with. Thanks. Twitch chat. Rocking and rolling right now. Appreciate it, guys. I'm rocking with KJ. Blocky on the left. Young Kev on the right. You get the rosters, but don't necessarily get the pronunciations. Third and five. Big 50 seconds for Blocky. Trying oh, to get away with Carr, oh, and he can't do sack. it. And the Kiva will use a timeout on fourth and 21. Wow. This has been a nightmare first half for that man right there. Things are not going well for Blocky. And with 46 seconds left and two timeouts, Kiva has plenty of opportunity here to turn this into at least a field goal and make this a three-possession ball game. And I believe the Kiva gets the ball start the second half. Blocky did get it first. 41 seconds away from halftime. We'll have some quick highlights with Dave and Rico and the gang. And then we'll be right back in to the second half at a 14-point game. Can Kim add to it? Goes to the flat. There's huge check. And he'll work it to the 47-yard line. See, I'm up here learning. Sometimes we teach the chat. Sometimes they teach us. Huge check. Say it again. Huge check. Huge check. KJ. Yeah, KJ just, it's a little easier for us. Vic buying time. Look at the Vickens. Going to use his leg again. Can he Old turn school. up field? No. Able to get out of bounds, though. That's going to save a timeout with 29 ticks left of the half. Big play right here. Kip doesn't get this first down. He'll have to consider punting the rock. Looking, throwing, Brown! Patrick! Pulls it in at the 31. It'd be a 48 yard from there, and he decides to use a timeout. We talked about the, the kickers he has on the roster Dan Bailey, Jeff Heath. Day two. Day two. Day two. See, who did he throw out there in the starting line for go. today? It's going to be Heath. And Vic takes off. That should be enough. Get down! Holds on to it to the eight and uses his final timeout. Can't take a sack with 12 seconds left in the first half. This field goal is so crucial. I know 21 is sweet, but 17 makes it a three-point, a three-possession uh, game. That was huge. And if you're wondering why he didn't protect Mike Vick, is there's no injuries in Ultimate Team, and he used the cover ball mechanic with the RB button, which significantly decreases your chance at a fumble. So he was comfortable running in the open field with the Vickens, as long as he's holding that RB button. He told us he had the best red zone offense of the four remaining. 
really felt like that was one of his advantages over blocking this game is his ability to convert in the red zone. Yeah, that's absolutely what we said. We said, Kip, what's the, the key to this game? He said, I need to hold Blocky to three because I know that my red zone offense is that much better than his. He's not going to mess around. The kick is up, and it's good. And Kiv leading this one 17 to nothing. Boy, could Blocky use a kick return. We've seen it so many times in salary cap. You got some guys out there on the kickoff team that don't have a lot of speed. If they can get by him, they can be gone. Needs it bad. Gonna pooch it. Taken at the 22. Lovato, forget about it. Running like Demi Lovato. And Kim's telling us he's worried about holding Blocky to three in the red zone, and that's the key to the Blocky needs to get into the red zone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's not even a, a key to the game if he's in the mental pretzel right now. Full mental pretzel. Shout out to Farles who's hanging out with us throughout the first couple days. I dropped the Farles mental pretzel line one time during the <laughs> broadcast, and my family's hitting me up. They're like, oh, the mental pretzel line was phenomenal. You're like, not mine. I was like, oh, gee. <laughs> Here at the end of the half, 17 to nothing in favor of no, that no, man right there. Young Kiv is like, seriously, bro, I said, can I get some water? Thank you. Finally, I've scored 17 points. Is that not enough to get some H2O in this building? <laughs> Luckily for him, admin VA Justin Chow on the side right there <laughs> with the H2O. Admin, water boy, whatever you need him to do. Yeah, all around Madden guru. Let's go to Dave and Rico here with the half. Thank you, gentlemen. Chow is a jack of all trades. We love him and appreciate him. Does so much for this broadcast. Thank you, Chow. But 17 nothing at halftime here, Rico. This has gone just about as bad as it can go, I think, if you're blocky right now. We talked about before this game, passing efficiency, turnovers. Both of those columns are not checked for blocky. So take a look at these, these highlights. Yeah, you see Kiv warming, warming his hands up. He knew he was ready. He had his, play, his playbook ready to go. Juszczyk, the big man, KJ, absolutely too much for Blocky to handle right here, using that near close formation down in the goal line to punch that ball in. But we mentioned the turnovers, and like Scott said at breakfast, talking about Calvin Johnson at safety on defense, how big of a game-changing player has he been? That's been the whole story of the first half. That adjustment might have single-handedly won Kiv this game. Mm -hmm. We talked about Blocky last in during the league and called him intercepty because of his great defense. Right. He's now intercepty because of his offense. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been really, really, he needs to find a way to get this thing going. And, and we talked about Blocky being the 16 seed into the Madden ultimately, just barely made it in. He's now on the biggest stage that he's ever been on considerably. Do you see and kind of feel that moment maybe getting to him a little bit? Well, here's the thing. He's emotionless, mm. so we can't really tell. Right. But all we can do is judge him by his gameplay. And right now, he needs to get some points on the board immediately. Mm. Whether it's a field goal, touchdown, you know you want seven as opposed to three. But he got to get some points on the board, get Kiv back on his heels, or else this game could get ugly quick. And if you had to do one thing tactically on defense, if you're Blocky, obviously you don't want to turn the ball over. One defensive adjustment that Blocky needs to make. Has to force Vic right. As a former Vic user, you know <laughs> everything wants to go left. He struggles to throw back across. So make him roll right so that any of his reads are a little tougher. Seeing all this Vic out here, Rico, I'm ready for this comeback. I'm ready for Mad 19, Rico. You, I, I, I'm so ready. I see Vic. I see all the holes. I see the opportunities. EA Sports in the game. All right, the training starts tomorrow. I like it. Let's get back over to Scott Cole, RG, for the second half. Fellas? Appreciate it, gentlemen. Well, we are in the Elite Conference Final, and it's 17 to nothing as Dave and Rico almost get taken out by the jib. But it, that's about the way Blocky has felt. Like, he can't get out of the way of young Kiv. Yeah, at the top of the show, we're talking about how efficient Blocky was with the ball during the Ultimate League, league season. Only four interceptions thrown. But here he is. He already has half of that in the first half with two interceptions. He's going to have to turn it around. He ranked fifth overall in interceptions. Make sure I have that right. No, he was second overall. That's what I'm saying. He, yeah. he didn't turn. He was second overall in giveaways and inter throwing interceptions. And here he is, Kib just completely all over him. This is as flustered as we've seen Blocky all season. Yeah, plus 15 turnover differential for young Kib during the season. And right now, Blocky is in a hurt. Not only is he down 17, but Kib's got the ball once again. He goes down there. Scourge right here. 
It could, could be the exclamation point. The, the road to the final could be wide open. Yeah, this is a huge drive for Young Blocky. He's going to have to stand up for himself on this one, get himself back in the ball game. And remember, Kiv really, oh, there you go. Kiv loves to pass the ball, so it's not as easy for him to milk the clock down as it would be for a guy like True Boy or Drini or Problem. So if you're blocking, you have plenty of time in this game. You just need to start making some plays. Second and 13, the throw. And Cooks laid out for it at the 45-yard line. You're going to miss that guy in New England. I'm telling you right now, RG. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, OK. My yeah. last remembrance of Brandon Cooks in New England is Jenkins clapping him in the Super Bowl <laughs> and being out for the game. That's true. I actually saw, the, I saw Dubby draw a picture of that and uh, have Jenkins sign it. So not, not the best moment. One thing I want to call out is how Kid talked to us about Calvin Johnson being able to play the short stuff and the deep stuff, and that's worked out for him so far. Blocky had made a change in this game where he took out Sam Shields and put Richard Sherman in the slot to do something similar. However, we've seen Kiv attack that Sherman side multiple times and Sherman not yet being able to make a play. So things not working as planned for Blocky. Vic on second and six. And there it is. Right Wide there. open as Cooks once again. And you can see Sherman. Dreadlocks and all. He's nowhere close to that. Yeah, he's playing the flat route so hard that he's not able to use his size to get up and make a play on that corner route. And I think Blocky was expecting him to be able to do that. And I think it's just got his whole defensive game plan somewhat debacled right now. By the way, Kiv woke up at 5 a.m. this morning. That's 3 a.m. his time on the West Coast. Yep. He was on Good Morning Football and all that. So he's had a long day up to this point. Of course, he wouldn't mind extending his bad in 18 life by a few more hours. Yeah, what a team player by Young Sheamus. You tell me I got to wake up at 5 a.m. on the biggest Whatever they're day of my life. Put it on Juju. And yeah, we'll see Juju tonight. We'll have to bring that up to him when he joins us for the final oh, broadcast. Pickens. Spin and Vicks move. Put him in the spin Ooh. cycle. And lucky not to fumble at the 24. And I can't stress it enough, Scott, the fact there are some things, obviously we're playing a football video game, and there are some things that are similar to real life and some things that are different than real life. A key difference here in much salary cap ultimate team is there are no injuries and fatigue is limited, and that greatly changes the way you're able to play with your players. And what Kip did there with Mike Vick was a great example of that, willing to take those kind of hits as long as he covers the ball. That's why the CFM guys that are in chat right now, they cringe every time you see a quarterback take a big hit like that. And but. Here in salary cap, you only got 34 players, you know? Well, here's the thing is we're a young sports guy. These are the type of things that sure. I think we'll have to look at, reevaluate, and you might see that type of stuff change as things continue to grow and develop. Well, he's only 20 years old, but he's looking like a veteran. This is his 33rd game here at a live event in the Madden MCS era. He's won 59% of those. On the other side, Blocky, although he's a year older, 21 years old, this is only his 14th game in the MCS era. And remember that what I said at the top of the show, where Blocky only two wins away from potentially making the Madden Classic and the Madden Challenge. I mean, that's like a minimum of $10,000 if you win those two games, and that gives you a chance to play a lot more regular season games. Hand it off to Henry. Derek, oh, rumbling, fight. stumbling. Stumble recovery. All the way down to the five-yard line. And this is big, Scott, because if he can get in, score the touchdown, make it, it'll be a three-possession game still, but that would mean Blocky would need three touchdowns with three two-point conversions. Highly unlikely, and look at Derek Henry. Out of our 16 competitors here in the Ultimate League, Kiv was 12th in rushing, only 544 yards. Let's go. But he's really got it going. Watch out for Juszczyk. Boom, off him again. You run in, you shoot the gap, and KJ just shreds you off. Luckily, the nose tackle there to make the play. Worth noting that four minutes is already ticked by in this third quarter. How about that? Six yep. minutes away. You don't see young Kev usually with a long possession drive. But I think he knows he's moments away from maybe punching his ticket to the final tonight. 
<laughs> Who will he face? Will it be Drini? Will it be True Boy? That game's coming up next right after this. He's in! Oh. Game changer. Oh. Bo Jackson, who? Uh, it's all about the huge check. Huge check is hungrier for this win than the chat is for Twitch drop, Scott. <laughs> he is fighting I don't for know. that That's glory. A <laughs> He's hungry, I'm telling you. And I know they're hungry for them drops. <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch so far. But KJ, oh my goodness. And props to Kip for doing the research, finding a fullback that's versatile enough to play fullback, play tight end. You can line him up in the backfield and hand him off the ball. That's good research and preparation right there by Seamus Kivlin, AKA Young Kim. Royvin in the chat, one of our moderators, he's like, so true, RG. You're speaking the truth about the Twitch drops. He's hungry, and I know the Twitch chat gets hungry for them drops, but KJ's not to be trifled with right now. You know, they had a bit more time to prepare than you did sort of like the week after, over week, or even a, at a, a, a typical Madden event when we have some of our other majors where it's like game after game or day after day. You know, this is weekly you know, basis, and Kiv has used a little bit of that extra time to lock in on blocking. Extra preparation time well used by Kim. Donnie Moore's telling me KJ, Harvard graduate. Right there in Cambridge, Massachusetts. That's around right where I grew up. I don't think I can compete with that. First to 10 for Blocky. Throws another C route. This time it's Hill on the outside. And as we move to the fourth quarter, Blocky's been our Cinderella. It's been a long road. We caught up with Blocky. Journey's been long and tough, you know, there's a lot of games, going back on tough losses, thinking about it, re-watching it, you lose that close game, or even if you get blown out, you gotta go back and watch and learn what you could have did better, what you did wrong, what you did good, and just keep getting better and better. Right now he's down 24 to nothing. I mean, we're not even playing, and we have as many points as Blanky right now. Jeez, Scott Savage. It's just, so it's just not, what it's not what we've seen. It's not what we've seen from right. the guy all season long. And one thing, though, is he's struggling right now with this crossfire blitz, and he's admitted to me that he has had trouble with this defense in the past. So he felt that he prepared for it, but that just doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, he said that defense locked him up in the club championship versus Skimbo, in the Madden Challenge online elimination game where he was one game away, in the Madden Classic elimination game against W where he was one win away from the live event. All of it was due to him losing was due to that crossfire defense and that's what kids hitting him with right now and he just doesn't seem to have the answers. He was prepared for it. He was ready for it. But sometimes you can practice, you can know what's coming, but you gotta be able to execute and the execution just not there right now for Blackie. We mentioned this is a thirty thousand dollar game. That would have been huge for Blocky. He's made 55,000 and change this year. That 30 grand is a ton, but right now, the bank has taken it all over to Young Kiv. I, I would have never, I thought we were gonna have a hot, highly contested battle here with Kiv and Blocky. I would have never thought to see a 24 nothing here in the fourth quarter. Blocky on fourth down, having to go for it with zero points. Derek Carr throws oh. another interception, third of the game. And that's Carter who pulls it in. Wow. I might throw up. Well, I, what, what you need to realize here, though, is, is obviously things aren't going well for Blocky. So it's go. likely going to be the, the, the end of his Madden season in Madden 18. However, keep in mind, there's still a lot of success to Blocky. This is a guy that though he played competitively last, last year, he never made a live event. The common Madden community had no idea who he was. And here he is this year, comes onto the scene, makes a name for himself. People are now gonna know who he is. And you know what? I bet you there's tons of people watching this who wanna get involved in it next year. And Blocky's a prime example of someone you could be. He can show you that, hey, just because you're not a big name, and just because everybody doesn't know who you are, that doesn't mean you can't show up into a competitive Madden event and make a serious run and make a name for yourself. So anyone that's watching that wants to get into this, forget the score, use Blocky as motivation because he's showing you that it is possible to make that much of a difference in one year's time. You're one club championship away from starting your journey, starting your road. The ladder starts way 
earlier than that. Here's a third and seven. They hand it off to Henry. And just to keep talking about Blocky for a moment, as I know it's been, we'll have plenty of time for young Kiv throughout the remainder of the day into the evening here in Dallas, Texas, is this was a guy that nobody wanted to play. Uh, yeah. Skimbo said he'd never prepared for someone more than he's prepared for Blocky. We asked, who's the person that, you know, they think that would go undefeated in the league or be a surprise in the league? Problem told us Blocky. Out of all the top Madden guys he could have picked. So high praise for the young man. This is the biggest stage he's ever been on. But at this time, he's come out and laid a donut. It's rough, it happens, but he's been through adversity before. I expect him to be back next season as strong as ever. And he, he said something interesting to me, Scott. I asked him, what advice would you give to people who are in your shoes who aren't very well known, who want to make it to the main stage and want to make a run at this thing? And, and he said, you know what? You should set a goal for yourself when Madden comes out to just get better at one thing every single day. And Rome wasn't built in a day, so if you could just spend each day and say, you know what, today I'm going to get better at run defense. Today I'm going to get better at setting up this defense. Today I'm going to work on my run game. Uh, I really like that approach, and I thought it was really good advice for our younger competitors who may be, you know, trying to dabble into competitive matter in the future. Well, running out the clock here, just 50 seconds left. It's been all young Kiv. Jumped out early. Two touchdowns, added an extra field goal before the half. And he, really the longest drive in three years I've seen from young Kiv, he puts together to start the second half. And once he punched it into the end zone, that really put Blocky in a tough situation. It looks like he's going to punt it away with Heath here. And that's good to see from young Kiv in future games. You heard me. I, I was worried that I've seen him have trouble being able to put games away in the past and not be able to kill the clock. Before that, he come out in this second half and put together long, prolific drives to really control that clock, even while in the shotgun offense. So the fact he was able to do that is very impressive and just makes him that much more of a dangerous competitor. I will say one thing. This will, Kiv's brand will continue to grow. His fandom will continue to grow. But Blocky, as they shake hands up on the stage, there's a lot of fans of that young man. I know he came up short today. Final score, 24 to nothing. Young Kiv has punched a ticket to the Madden Bowl tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN2 and, of course, all over our digital platforms. But what a dominating performance from the young Kiva. This is what we've come to expect from Kip, though, Scott. Remember, he is one of the most consistent players that we've seen in this MCS era. He's made three championship games in the last two years, and he's yet to get over that hump. It's going to be exciting to see live on ESPN2 tonight if he's finally able to get over that hump and be able to call himself a Madden champion. Well, Blocky is leaving us winning $55,000 this season. Young Kiv is adding to it, and he's standing by with Adrian Lawrence. Thanks so much, Scott. Yes, here with Young Kiv, you pulled out the win in an elite fashion, 24 to nothing. How are your nerves? Uh, I had a little bit of nerves at first, but once I got that first stop, my nerves went away, and then we uh, came out with the win. And you happen to force a turnover in the first and second quarter, and then you kind of just completely ran away with it. Those turnovers, how do you think they impacted the rest of the game? Uh, I kind of struggle on defense a little bit, and I, I, I like, I uh, want my offense to carry my success in Madden. So when my defense is stepping up, uh, it's just a recipe for success, really. And success we did see there. And looking forward now, you've never had a head-to-head -head matchup with True, but you have with Trini, and he ended up taking the win against you and going on to win the challenge. And so in terms of if you have to face him again, what are you expecting? Uh, I, expect, I know what both of them run, so I've prepared for everyone here. So I just got to go into my notes, and then uh, hopefully whoever wins that game. Um, it doesn't really matter who I play, but hopefully whoever I do play, I come out with the win in the final. Well, I wish you all the best of luck and congrats on your run so far. Thank you.